Nothing's ever easy, is it? Really under pressure. We need to isolate the supply to here so we don't die. Oh, that is a genius idea. Have you ever wondered how theatre lighting works? Because if you're like me, every time I'm at a show in the West End or whatever, even at like a small time production, I'm always looking up at the scene and looking at lights and wondering how it works. But today, we're gonna be doing some work on some theatre lighting and uh, I'm working with none other than <laughs> Mr. Spicy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what are we doing today, Oliver? This um, school drama hall has about 20 really old halogen theatre lights like this. They come back to these old dimmer packs, but they want to add colours and moving lights and fancy effects. So we're upgrading all of this for fancy new lights. Cool. So on these rails out here, see up there, that's where all the old lights were mounted. But those are being decommissioned right now by uh, my wife and Oliver's wife. So we're going to be putting up new lights, new colour lights. They're all going to be controllable, movable. Um, but these dimmer packs, this is the old way of doing it. But are we completely taking these racks off? We are, yeah, because all the new lights have dimming capabilities built in and they're all LED, so. So we're doing something called DMX lighting. What does that stand for? Uh, digital multiplex. Don't ask me why. Right, so uh, the way it used to be done, okay, from what my understanding is, please cut me off if I'm wrong here, Oliver, but each one of these dimmer racks has these channels on them with their individual fuses and these are numbered like this the flex would then come out of that run off up along the trunking out on these balconies and over to these sockets here so those sockets there like socket 26 whatever number it might correspond to um, corresponds to the number on here is that right yeah that's basically right yeah so we're going to bypass these basically and just send a switched feed to all the lights but you can see the dmx connection here so each dimmer rack has dmx line going through it and then it comes back to this really old school um 088 dmx console right so this would even work with the new lights but obviously it's a bit old we're going to upgrade it for something a bit more um 21st century right then so i guess step one will be decommissioning this yeah this is the bit that I'm most worried about, so we need to get this done. I'll make a job relabeling them all, cutting all the plugs off. I'll take this off for you, and then you can focus on the more complicated stuff. I'm happy doing all the donkey work. Cool. All right, let's do it. Job number one is gonna be decommissioning all of these dimmer racks. So this is the kind of one way, I'll be honest, I don't know much about this. I'm not an expert. Oliver is the expert on this stuff. So um, if I'm wrong, <laughs> feel free to correct me in the comments. I will make sure Oliver watches this video through. But if you come round here, each one of these circuits corresponds, as far as I can tell, to a dimmer rack. So if I switch that one off there, that flicks this light off over here. And if I flick off number two, see this breaker here? you'll see this red light here go off. So I'm gonna start unplugging them all, but I do not wanna lose the labeling because otherwise that means we're gonna to have to bell out every single socket because every socket is labeled and so is every plug. And I think the plan is because the new DMX lights that we've got, they don't need a dimmer rack. Each individual light has a DMX receiver in it. So we wire a DMX socket on each row and then each of the lights links out and then you create a universe which you then basically program, which we're gonna be covering later on in the video. It's really cool. I've actually just been <laughs> watching videos of it over the weekend, because this is a new world to me. And the reason why I wanted to learn it, and I've asked Mr. Chili if I can do a job with him, is because I'm seeing more and more DMX lighting and this type of install come into ho homes now. Like every kind of technology, I feel it generally starts in the commercial space, then it shares itself over to the domestic space. Let's get this whipped off. I just want to have a look behind because we need to figure out a way making it all look nice as well. Because what we're going to have, instead of controlling each individual rack, we're going to have the DMX line come straight, I think, straight out of the multiplexer, the thing that controls it, out to the actual light fitting itself on a separate cable, the DMX cable. So that means these can basically just be replaced with a 
a little consumer unit. So that may be a, a circuit per metal row out there. Oliver has entrusted me to do this and figure it out and find a way of doing it neatly. What I'm not sure is if you come round, you'll see trunking is cut to each section. So I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna make that look nice. And also the other thing is we've got only one earth wire, which is doing the whole lot. And I think ideally, if you've got separate circuits, it'd be nice for them to be on separate CPCs. So yeah, we'll see, let's get this, let's get this out. Okay, so that is literally just a, its own thing. So there must be a junction lower down. I reckon it's behind this. That's where the magic's happening. This little junction box here, you see all these DIN rail connectors at the back? That is going to be where everything joins through. And what's nice is they're all labelled, so that's actually been done really pretty well. Here, I'll show you. You can see they're all labelled up. That makes life a whole lot easier for us. Ah, I have an idea. I have an idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these top racks off. I'm going to figure out where the power for those come in from the top. I'll take them out of the connector block. Seeing as there's already DIN, DIN rail markers here, we don't need these plugs anymore. I'll shift the, the labels. So you see here, these, these tags literally just slide down the cable. Let me get a screwdriver to show you. There are little cable identifiers. I will just move that onto the other side so that these are all identified. I can then drop all of these plugs out and uh, that makes things a whole lot easier. Let's just double check that they're definitely right. So that is 24. No. <laughs> okay, well that's funny because a lot of them aren't actually labelled. That one there is labelled 24, but that's labelled 24 here. Nothing's ever easy, is it? Okay, well, the first thing I definitely can do is at least take the top off and then start stripping out and labelling. Let's do that. Whilst I'm in there stripping out, we've got Ramon and all the guys here busy working away. So you've got Mateo, the man behind Chili Electrical YouTube. You've got Mr. and Mrs. Chili Electrical. And then you've got Ramon up there. What are you doing, Ramon? Running the DMX cable. Yeah. Cool. So did you see that there's a KFC in the McDonald's about one minute away? I while my wife is standing right there. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I had KFC, to be honest with you. We've, we've got lunch with us. Oh my goodness. That is unheard of. Right, so we've finished stripping out. My lovely apprentice has just been tidying up all the cables there on the floor. We are all stripped out. So now we are closer. It's easier to explain now. So we're going to be coming feeds straight out of the board, one circuit for each one of those lighting bars going across. It's going to come feed out of the board, group the eight plugs for one lighting bar. So we'll have inside here, I think there's five lighting bars out there. So we'll have five groups of connector blocks and then these will go straight through. We're keeping these now because actually we're going to blank them up because we need one um, space for this. Multiplexer, I think it's called. So this is the actual DMX thing itself. So that will go, I think, here. And then that will be plugged into that socket there. And then we'll blank it off so that it's just there and it's useful rather than just wasting it and recycling it. It's not doing any harm in here. And then we'll keep these as well and we'll just put the front cover on and obviously label them up. But for now, it's time for lunch. And for like a season first, for probably the channel history ever, we have our own lunch. Also, would you love to demonstrate what we have, please? It's just really simple. It is a little pasta salad. With Amazing. Some pesto. It doesn't look that good. I mean, it looks pretty I made good it to in me. Five minutes. All right. And we got corn and oh, okay. There's no chocolate. I think. <laughs> It's an easy mistake to make, she forgot the chocolate. But yeah, obviously I made this myself last night. 
Um, I always make salads and I always eat salads because I'm a healthy boy. Oh, okay, there's no chocolate. I think sneezing is take to make. Right, so we're back from lunch and uh, now it's time to replace this board. So this is the board that is feeding these server racks. Um, we need to replace the breakers for C10 RCBOs rather than these different MCBs that are there. We couldn't get hold of the Actinine breakers that would fit this board now because Merlin Juran is now Schneider. We need to isolate the supply to here so we don't die. It says here that it's fed from DB5, BR5, wherever that is. So I believe that is over there somewhere. So this is the board here. And to be honest, I'm a bit terrified to take the cover off because it's like, it is jank. I think it is BR5, right? That is ridiculously confusing labeling. Before um, brown, black, and gray, you had brown, red, yellow. There's only one over there. So that makes me think, okay, is it brown and red five? But it's not labeled that way. You've got red five, blue five. I'm gonna just turn a couple off and we'll see what happens. Actually, I've got a tool that is in my van that has been sitting in my van for ages that I feel like I never use, to be honest, but when I use it, it's really useful. This is not sponsored. This is honestly not paid. I'm gonna grab it and I'll show you it. Here, come with. Join me in my absolute bomb tip of a van. This is my little kit that I've put together. So it is Milwaukee pack out, of course, but I've got my QTEC KT66 DL tester, and then I have everything I need for testing. So I've got my little Klein tone tester, my temperature tester, hand tools inside here, I've got a load of handy testing bits, like batteries, a little torch, just every essential, basically. The thing I've come to get is this, a little zap it. Zap it, you are welcome for this free advertising. <laughs> basically, I bet the battery's dead. Amazing, the battery's still alive. It was really good. I was just climbing up the ladder and dropped it. I'm hoping it still works. We're good, let's carry on. So on the board now, I put the, on the transmitter, I'm gonna get an earth and a live. Slide that down so that then becomes live. We switch that on. So that's telling me now main's on. So now with the receiver, this is telling me main's on. So I'm gonna leave that there. We'll go back over to where the distribution board is. Right, so now I've got this receiver beeping away here. I'm gonna work my way through the ones I think it could be until it tells me it's off. This is not a way of safe isolation. This is just a way of verification. You wouldn't do this in a hospital. Right, switching off someone's granddad's iron lung. It's not on this board. I know it wasn't on this board. All right. Let's go DB hunting. Nah, mains are still on. Trying to find it, but the labeling is horrendous. Right, I think we've managed to find where it is. I've tried switching it off inside of here. But then I found this one here, which I believe is going to be that because it says BR5, stage power, activity tool. But the trouble is that goes through this switch here and I don't want to switch this off because if I switch that off, we lose a load of rooms and I can't open this up really while it's live because I believe this is going to be some kind of bolt on or well, I guess it would probably be that type of fuse inside of there. These HRC fuses, which I shouldn't really take off without permission and PPE. So I think what I'm going to do is put that back, get everything prepped for that job and do it tomorrow. I had my safe isolation kit, I had my Q-Tech meter, I had everything ready to go, but it's not safe to do it today. So we'll go find something else and do that tomorrow morning. Absolutely sweating buckets in here. Whenever you're working in these kind of plant rooms, they're always about 900,000 degrees. So that has scuppered our plans there a little bit. Um, Oliver, sadly, we cannot turn the power off until tomorrow morning. So I guess our options are to go find some acting iron breakers somewhere so that we can keep that board that's already up there. Because if that board's already up there, at least we don't have to do a power shutdown. We can just switch the main switch off. What are you doing? get all these fi fixtures um, addressed to what we've patched them on the mixer, uh, the console. So those ones are done. We're just having a bit of difficulty with this one. So you're able to literally shift them around and control the light fitting. Awesome. Right, so while they're over there programming, um, I won't harass them with that. 
We'll try and get a bit more on that later, but we're just having a bit of a nightmare. I say we're having a bit of a nightmare. Pro old Oliver is having a bit of a nightmare, but I'm over here now with Ramon. We are going to be wiring up each one of the receivers. So this is the DMX cable that he was running earlier. So this is it here. So now he needs to solder on the faceplate, fix that in. And then we have the power. So the power is coming from that board there straight through now into these boxes. I'll show you one with the cover off later along and into these numbered sockets. Each one of these five bars will have a bus on it. I hope I'm using the right terminology there. And then it will go into the first light and then they'll just link kind of daisy chain out. There's the box there. So you've just got all the power cables coming in and then going out to their relative sockets. So. so these are all ready to solder. So we can come by tomorrow and solder all of these. We really need more time though. I'm gonna go and see if I can bribe the caretaker to let us stay in here a bit longer. I'm thinking if I say to him, we'll pay you a little bit if you just come back a bit later and let us lock up. All right, so spoiler alert, uh, we couldn't stay any later. I tried bribing the caretaker to see if he'd let us stay in, but it turns out that man is a man of integrity. Money was not swaying him. Tried bang as a mash, tried everything, waved it around. Like, and yeah, he didn't let us stay any later. So uh, that means I'm actually finished early today, which is insane. I mean, I'm staying in a hotel, but still, like, the guy who specced that was like, oh, yeah, man, that right there, that looks good. It basically means that tomorrow is going to be a nightmare, so we're going to have to get there really, really early, and we've got loads to carry on with, so see you tomorrow morning. Right, so it's another day. We are back in the little control room. So the plan today is to get these server racks all finished and buttoned up. So I've managed to get hold of the breakers for that board, which is very nice. So I've managed to get hold of the Schneider ones. So it means I don't have to swap that whole board out. Um, so it'll be going straight from the breakers out into these DIN rail terminals, which will be linked per bar, and then straight through off that up along that conduit and then out into the bars you see oliver is there soldering um he's soldering all the dmx connections you've got the guys down there programming all the dmx lighting um and then my plan is once i've got this on i'll go out there and actually explain dmx and go into the theory of it a little bit more um but for now we're really under pressure because basically the caretaker shuts this place at four o'clock and so that means there's no late work in. So it'll be a case of plowing on until we're actually done. I'm getting on good here though. See, I've got, got all the blanks in there now. All underneath, it's all blanked off on both of the panels. So it just needs to be fixed now. So yeah, cue the B-roll. Okay, so I need to figure out what sockets are on what rows. So I'm just double checking because I'm gonna be putting a circuit per row of lights. It looks to me like one to eight is along here, nine to 16 is on that one, and then presumably 17 up and etc. and so on. So what number is that socket just next to you? Socket 17, you got a camera as well. God, everyone's an influencer nowadays, isn't they? You can find Oliver on Bebo. We are cracking on in here now and there is still loads to do and there is still a massive time constraint because yeah, trying to get out. I'll show you what I'm doing in here. Um, I'm replacing these for DIN rail mounted Wago terminals. So how these work, you see these little bars here, these little white bars, 
they basically link out the sections I want to link out. So I'm having a section there for the lines, the section there for the neutrals, and then I'll have a feed coming from the board to each one. And each one of these will represent a bank of sockets or one of those rails out there. So yeah, we're cracking on. I absolutely love these. Do you know who got me onto color-coded zip ties? Was this man up here. And now I feel like a savage using anything other than that. How are you getting on? I am getting on okay. I'm just um, taking these five DMX feeds into this splitter here. Yeah. So probably... So we'll have to solder them into some kind of XLR output and then patch them in, I guess. Yeah, I'll show you that, yeah. Could you also just do it with the brush plate and put them into XLRs? Yeah. I guess that's less Gucci though, isn't it? But I'm done with this side now. I just need to pull through from the board. I'm going to pull through um, some 2.5 mil feeds because these are a bit too big really to have six mil. And then, yeah, that's me. That's me done. We've got some testing to do actually as well, haven't we? Yeah. Nothing's plugged in yet, is it? Because I don't fancy blowing those lights up if I'm testing. No. Do you want me to grab my tester? We could blow up like 10 grand's worth of lights in one go. Is it easier? If you have one of them plugs, should we make up a little R2 plug with it? Yeah. Just link between line and earth on it, and then you can just plug it in all of them, and I can just test from here, from the board. Right, Oliver, how are you doing? All good, thank you. Yeah, so you're just soldering these. What are these that you're soldering? So these are more 5 pin XLRs, but these are going to go into that patch panel. So that's going on there. The pins his soldering will go in these holes here. And you have cables that will flex out and go into these DMX outputs, um, which will then go on to control the lights. So these cables run to these boxes that I showed you yesterday. They run from there back to here which he is soldering onto there. What are the advantages of DMX? Why is that a pro like a protocol that's used? Um, so basically, it allows you to control a whole string of lights with lots of different functions over a two pair data cable. So it just gives you so much flexibility. You can swap a light out for a different type and you know, the power is just constant, but the DMX is what's controlling it. So it's basically addressable lighting. Exactly. So if you think of like an addressable fire alarm system even, where you have a, a, a circuit where everything is, is installed on that circuit is given an address. Um, it's so hard to explain that. How would you explain addressable? I think we're gonna have to do a little sketch. We're gonna have to do a little sketch. So, I'll try and explain it the traditional way, which is what we just ripped out, and then the new way. So basically, we have a console, got some video of the old console, it's an ancient thing, and then we've got about 15 um, halogen lights. So the mains wiring is quite simple. Um, they all connect back to one room and then the way we achieve the DMX control is there's dimmer packs, bulky, great big tungsten dimmers, and the mains goes back into these, so each one controls um, about 12 lights, I think. The DMX signal comes from this console to the dimmer pack. So then this says, turn on light one, two, whatever. This works fine, but the lights are really high power because they're not LED. And we get very basic control, like just be one color. All of the ones here were just warm white. Now the new way is the same. We have a DMX console. This one's got a touch screen, so it's quite new. And then instead of having dimmer packs, all the lights get wired to the power, mains power directly. So it might be, you know, a couple of circuits, depending on how powerful they are. And then the DMX signal, instead of going through a dimmer pack, goes directly to each light and then loops to the next. And then they can all talk back to the controller and vice versa. We can have moving lights, colored lights, you know, pick 
red, green, blue. Some of these lights have got like amber and lime. And the universe, basically off of one cable, you can have 512 um, channels. And along that data cable, we can then assign each light an address. So, you know, a red, green, blue color changing PAR might occupy three channels like that. Then what we can do is increase the value of each channel from zero to not a thousand, but two, five, five. So that's your range. And every channel has that capability. So then we can say we want this light, number one, to have 50% or 50 out of that range in red, 150 green and 50 blue and mix our own color. So some lights might take three channels and then you could have, I don't know, a hundred of them or a bit more. But if they were moving heads, for example, so lights that have, you know, red, green, blue, um, cyan, lime, rotate, then they would take way more channels and then you can only get so many lights on one universe. If like me, you're still a little bit confused by all of this, um, don't worry, you're not alone, but there are courses for it, which I've actually just signed myself up for, or CoLED are running it. At the minute, Oliver himself is actually teaching that course. Um, if you're lucky, he'll let you touch his hair, even, if you sign up now. Um, so go check that out, the link is in the description below. Um, and yeah, if you wanna go learn something a little bit more, get yourself a little bit more geeky, I'll see you there. Right, so that is pulled in and we're pretty much done with the power side of it now. So you can see there, I've got them all dressed in, kind of ready to go, just in the process of labeling everything up now. So what have you got there, Oliver? So we've got our usual brother labeler and we're just... Um... Non-sponsored, by the way. Yeah, the, I, I've paid for my labeler, which Oliver just dropped on the floor. Sorry. And Oliver just paid has paid for his, but they are the best, I think. <laughs> so I've just set the spacing for this D-type patch panel. So I'm just going to do a label that says, you know, bar one, two, three, four, five. Just gone into the block spacing. There you go, 27.5 mil. Brilliant. And then uh, it's just as simple as typing it in. You're actually on time. I know. Is that why you've cheered up? Yeah, definitely. You've cheered right up. Meanwhile, I'm just getting some lovely shots of you. Do you know what I've not done in a while? Just look down the lens. Bosh. <laughs> They've got lunch. I'm really hoping it's something good. Where are they? Oh, look at that. Right. Ha ha ha, yes. That looks like a KFC bag. Which, of course, I wouldn't be eating. The absolute geeky portion of my audience is going to absolutely eat this up. That should be spaced about right. Yeah, it's spot on. Looks good to me. There are so many ways I can be cinematic here. I'm kind of clutching at straws at this point. What's down here? It's a camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we're ready to test. The guys outside have long since finished. So I think they're literally out there having a sleep right now on the lift. Um, but we've just been figuring out a few bits in here. We've got the DMX here all up and running. Green lights on all of the outputs there, which is good. So it's sending DMX signals. We are now just testing. So the testing is the same procedure as anything else really. So I've gone to continuity. I've nulled out my leads. And now I'm just testing between live and earth or line and earth on each circuit. So he's got a plug at the end. We've made a little 15 amp plug with a link between the live and earth, zeroed that. That then gets plugged in at every socket and we test this end. So let's start doing that, shall we? So he's got the other side linked out. So let's check bank five, 0 0.65. Over, it's over 500. You just yep, touched the screen. Yeah, my good, yeah. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's got to stay in. It's only a shock from my test meter. The thing is, insulation resistance testing, I'm sending a voltage down this line. 
500 volts. It's a very, very low current. But it's sending by 500 volts down to test the wires. So if you imagine you've got three cables, right? At no point should they intersect, or even just two wires. At no point should they intersect. So if the circuit is disconnected, when I touch this with voltage and I have a probe on that, if I pick anything up on that probe there, then it indicates that there's a screw that's gone through it or a damage in the insulation or something that's gone wrong, or there's an Oliver on the other end of it. So we've disconnected everything on the circuit and now we're doing insulation resistance. So we do R1 plus R2. So that is confirming that there is a good path between the conductor and the return path on the earth. And then we do insulation resistance between all conductors. So between earth and neutral, line and neutral, line and earth. Hope that makes sense. And then we're just gonna repeat that for all of them. See you in a sec. All right, so we've got something a bit unusual. We're, um, we're just testing all of the lighting circuits and we've got a dead short between line and neutral on circuit five. So a dead short is where basically we're getting a, perfect, a complete short circuit. So you can see there, 0 0.001. Now I really doubt that that is really the true test result. If that was really the test result, then it would have been blowing the MCB when it was wired in before. But I've just split, split the circuit in half there. I'm going to test it again, and if not, we're going to have to go do some investigating. Yeah, it's definitely on the wall sockets, it's not on the banks. So he so can... That's passed. Let's check there. We check on the lighting banks. Yeah, so that's clear. So he can he can plug in. That's the but light. Our flex it actually goes into there, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, let's go do some investigation. All right, so you can see these sockets here. Before I start taking them apart, I'm just going to investigate first, because I'm not convinced it's a dead short. Because if one of these was dead shorted out, it probably would have blown the breaker on the old circuit, unless there was a faulty circuit. So I'm more feeling like there's likely a load plugged in. I'm wondering if there's another one hidden somewhere. I've had a fault like this before, which made absolutely no sense. And then it turned out someone had uh, run an aerial booster and was stealing someone's electricity. Look how cool that is. <laughs> Look at that. That's locked. Oh, I'm dying for a wee. Why do I always need a wee at the worst times? We just have to take them all off. We'll start at what I think is the first point of the circuit, which is here. It all looks pretty clear. That actually looks like that might be the end of line. I had someone stuck there where there's original. <laughs> there somehow. Maybe we'll try this one back here. This is socket number 42. There's only one to each point. Oh yeah, of course there's only one to each point. It's not a radio circuit. This place would fail so hard on an EICR. Stuff like this. Um, there's nothing that looks wrong. This one here. That looks fine. Oliver, as far as I can tell, everything's clear. I'm just thinking for the wall sockets, if they're faulty, they've not got a DMX input anyway, have they? So I don't know if we're better off just leaving them disconnected. They'd just be live and doing nothing for kids to stick Werther's original wrappers into. I think we leave them disconnected. They're terminated both ends safely and just I'll label them up as spare, not in use and list the default. All right, me and Oliver, masculine energy working together. Two Kens. We went to see it. What did you think? I thought it was the worst storyline ever. We're talking about the Barbie movie, by the way. But um, production value. Our production value was excellent. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm, I mean, I'm saying this to my wife is standing behind me. The fact that Margot Robbie is, is in it doesn't hurt, does it? I don't regret seeing it. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't pay to go and see that at the cinema knowing what it was. But I feel people say similar about my channel. After they finish an episode, <laughs> yep. I'm saying I regret seeing it. I definitely wouldn't pay for it. So, this upgrade is part of a bigger upgrade to change all the lights in the school to LED, which isn't our job. It's another electrical company doing that. My mic's not on, is it? I haven't even got one on. You have got it on. No, but not for you. Yeah, you're on. Oh. A fluffy thing on your neck. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you think that was just your chest hair poking out? So yeah, all the LED lights in the school 
are now working. They've been upgraded from old fluorescents and halogens. And they wanted all the theatre lights upgrading because the old array of tungsten lights used something like 20,000 watts if they were all on full whack. And as, as before, probably power factor and exactly all the dim and wax and everything, all the noise and mess. Some of them were like 1.2 kilowatts each. Crazy. So um, now they're all upgraded. We did a quick calculation earlier and uh, we're at about two and a half thousand watts. We're just putting the last LED baton up for the other sparks because um, it's in the control room. Are you just cable tying to this tray? Oh, that is a genius idea. Right, so we are ready to power on and program, so let's see how it goes. Okay, can we get all on, please? Yes. Okay, so we have got it all finished and it's all working. So now it's just a case of programming, right? Getting it into the universe, as you call it. Basically, we've got um, two moving heads. So, so I'll are show they you. the moving? Yeah, they're the moving heads. Those yeah, ones. Yeah, the ones that have got like the funny the arms. Swivel. Yeah. yeah. So this is a zero eighty eight desk. It's quite easy to use, and it's got a nice little touch screen here. Yeah. So we're going to add them so that we can control them with the faders. Okay. So we've gone to add fixture, and then we're going to select Equinox. So it's a Fusion two hundred zoom spot. Yeah. Um, so then each light um, has a personality setting on the light so you can operate it in a really dumb mode where it just gives you access to one or two channels like brightness and shutter yeah um, or with some lights you can have a lot of channels this one supports up to 18 so that's going to give you pan tilt position speed intensity shutter strobe colors gobos which are like metal cutouts that let you sort of shape the light. Right, so they are all patched in and addressed. So now we can see them as fixture 19 and 20. The Equinox Fusions. Oh, I see. So that's super straightforward. You can just see all the lights we've added there. And if you want, I can show you the address. You can see they're at address 239 and 259. Yeah. It's just a quick way of telling you. But then actually that light is going to occupy 240, 241 all the way to use all those 16 channels. So that's done. So now if I turn 19 and 20 up, ta-da. There you go, so that's that spot on the floor there. And then if we go over here. So I'm gonna turn it down. There we go. I'm just adjusting that with this slider here. So that has been programmed to that space in the universe. So then we've also got all the different color um, palettes, beams, gobos, easy to access. So, so you could go on there and change. What's interesting about these moving heads is that they don't have a colored LED. So they're actually a color filter, a gel wheel. So you can see if on the floor, when I change the color, you can actually see it turn. Oh yeah. So it's just spinning a little wheel around the white LED. So the gobo is the metal shutout pattern thing. And then we can position it basically wherever we want in the room. So now we just need to make sure that all the lights operate as intended. And then we'll show the drama teacher how to save presets based on a particular show. So that right there is basically an overview of how DMX lighting inside of a theatre works on a basic level. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. It's like, I just can. Do, 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 do. I don't want to do it on my channel because I don't want to be casted for Barbie 2. It's not really my scene.